Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We're your hosts, Dan and Andy. Andy, how are you? Good, yourself? Good. Oh, sorry, voice cracked there, yeah. We're on season five, Andy. This is episode number 41 of the year. It's our sports edition. Tonight, being a Monday, is a sports edition, but we're going to focus only on the state amateur baseball tournament. Yes. We're not going to cover anything. Uh, in sports, this is too big. You know, there's too much going on, too many teams. And only C, only Section C, too, or Class C. We're going to cover Class C. Yeah, Class C. A lot of teams. We don't have time to cover all the B. We might do that later in a bonus episode. But right now, tonight, we're going to cover Class C, kind of a preview for the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. So this is year 101, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, last year was the 100th year. Year. Uh, only state, I believe, that's uh, ever been doing this this long in the entire nation. But this is 101st year. Um, look for our ad, by the way, too, in the sports program. In the in the program, when you get to the tournament, we'll have an ad from Sports and Songs Podcast in the tournament program this year. But we're going to be covering a preview. Let's start off with a trivia question, Andy. Fire away. State tournament preview. The question is, when the tournament started... Uh, 101 years ago, uh, it was always at a host city host location. Yeah. A, in other words, a one city would host it, one site. What year did it go to dual sites? What year did it go Ooh. to dual sites? Um, okay. And so other sites, for instance, this year there's three. It's Green Isle, Jordan, and Belle Plaine hosting the Class C tournament. So there's three sites. Well, actually, so, four because B is playing some games at, at Shakopee. Shockby's okay. hosting some Class B games, so there's four sites. First but, only. So it's kind of – it's been tri-hosted over the years uh, uh, recently by, by more than two sites. But uh, when do they convert over from one to multiple sites? That's the question. We'll get to the answer at the end of the end of the episode, Andy. But let's go through – let's go through the brackets because we've got – number one, we've got some – we want to educate the folks here too. We've been doing yes, this. Yes, we use educate. We like to educate. educate. So there's the logo. There's the logo. Kind of can take off the twins one. Little instead green of, guy stuck in the middle there. Instead of the uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul standing across the river shaking hands, what is it, Andy? It's 169. Interstate 169 right there. Got the little angry green owl guy right there. The Irish. The so Irish. they're hosting it. That's the official logo. If you see that, you know you're in the right spot. Those are the host sites. We need to let, let everyone know, first of all, that the tournament starts this weekend, starts Friday. It's single elimination, the entire tournament. Single. Mm -hmm. There's no such, there's no back draw, there's no consolation, no double elimination. You lose, you're out. So what, what else do we need to uh, inform the fans? First of all, the next four slides you see, thank you to the Minnesota Baseball Association for their, their YouTube show of it last night. You know their YouTube site and watch it and get their opinion. I got these shots off their YouTube channel, so thank you to them for those. What what they do uh, for the listeners is what they do is last year and this year they've had a selection show broadcast, a live show on YouTube, much like the NCAA basketball bracket reveal on CBS. But this is a bracket reveal for the Minnesota State Amateur Baseball Tournament. So they do a very good job of it. It's the second year they've done it. People like it. It's only yeah. growing. So we're going to use their screenshots here to go through – the preview once again, Class C. I think Connie misplaced our invite to be on. To tell you the truth, I, yes. Okay. She was she was drinking pretty heavy. Back they also then, do so. a you know a round table. They do some discussion and stuff, but there's just so much to cover. So we'll cover just the individual games, the locations, the seatings, and we'll also introduce the final top ten rankings for Class C. The last time they did a ranking, statewide ranking for the top ten teams. Uh, I'll introduce those into the mix here as well. And not only 7C, but all the brackets, you get to draft three pitchers. Um, so we can't really talk much about the other teams because we're not that that familiar with them, let alone the individual pitchers. We might have some certain names of teams we've heard a lot. But as we go through this, we're going to be homers. We're going to take the WCCO card and focus a lot on the 7C teams because we're familiar with them. We would mention some of the 12C teams, but Delano didn't make it. <laughs> Sorry. Delano didn't make it. You're right. In fact, when they did the Class C final top 10 rankings, two teams got beat out. Delano yeah. was a big upset. <clears throat> Avon was a number nine ranked team in the state. 
got beat out in the regional tournament, did not even qualify. And Watertown in Section 7C got beat out yeah. in their own tournament, didn't make I mean, Delano was doing good all year, and they just kind of had folded towards the end. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, so here we go. Once again, you get down to this postseason tournament, you never know what's going to happen, including the draft picks really make now, these guys different teams. These brackets, as I have them here, do not have game time and location for the second round. But on their site, they have updated with their big their big main sheet with all of it on there. That is upded on there. Correct. What this we have listed here is the is the opponent that's awaiting the winner is what yes. we have listed here. So we got Perm and Cold Springs Rockies. They'll face Jordan. I'm going to take a safe guess that game's in Jordan. Jordan's going to have home field if they win. I would assume Jordan would host all the time. Now, with that said, Laconi hosted a couple years ago and didn't make it all the way through. So just yeah. saying. Now, keep in mind, so this is a good topic. Uh, Jordan is the number one overall ranked team in the state of Minnesota for Class C. They're at yeah. home, and like you say, they could run the table at home if they keep winning. They won't even have to pack up their gear and travel to another site if they keep winning. That's okay. Sometimes that's favorable, and sometimes that's a disaster. Uh, some teams um, – And then again, sometimes it's jinx. That's why they make the tournaments are so great, too, for fans also, but a team like Jordan – Ooh, they have to travel all the way to Bell Plain. Ooh. <laughs> that might even be a closer drive for some of the players, depending where in Jordan they live. Correct. Correct. <laughs> a lot of these. Drive for Bell Plain. And what uh, Loretto do? and Atwater, winner plays. Well, also, Scott also for the uh, brackets here, I'll mention who's close, uh, some of these nearby teams that could also have a somewhat home field advantage. So we'll get to those when it comes up. So yeah. Winamingo and St. Bonnie. Well, St. Bonnie was the eight seed in the 18 7 seed bracket tournament. Uh, Kip called it. He said, watch out for St. Bonnie in that tournament, and here they are. Uh, winner plays New Ulm, which isn't that far a drive for them. And New Ulm uh, is the number three ranked team in the state, so they've got a tough bracket here because you've got the one mm -hmm. team and the three team in the same bracket, in the same bucket. And, and, Buck, and Buckman and Webster, it seems like we hear these teams in here a lot. Now, that's not saying they play in weak conferences. You must be good to make it all the time, so these are good teams. They usually make it pretty far. Werner plays Fergus. That little threesome right down here, Buckman, Webster, Werner playing Fergus, those would be good games to go to, in my opinion. Now, what I'm going to say right now, one of my predictions, Andy, and there's not going to be many on the show, but one is that Buckman Billy Goats game against the Webster Sox uh, yep. could be the, one of the best games to attend in the opening round. Yep. Remember, Webster was that team highly touted to get in the postseason last year, and due to a roster ineligibility, got eliminated. They never even made the postseason. Paperwork they error, say, yeah. play, and They were supposed to go. They've got a lot of frontline pitchers, a lot of youth. That Webster team is a team to look out for, when you, especially when you look at the uh, with the top pitchers they have, including the new players coming on board from the draft. That's a team to watch out for. Now, Buckman always came, seems to get to the finals, like you said, Andy, but as of the last ranking for the top top 10 in the state of Minnesota, Buckman was tied for fifth in the entire yep. state. Yeah. That's the game I think that we should be watching. Now, keep in mind on the – oh, yeah, we haven't gotten to the Loretto yet. Uh, yeah, get so you, you know, Loretto and Atwater on the other side over there. And Loretto on Sunday at 4. Loretto's got the Kosky boys, including Corey yep. Kosky himself. Yep. yep. So Saturday and Sunday, and Jordan's the place to be right there. Um Swing by Coach Mike's house for you – know, he'll put you up for the night. He's ever in the barn. For a few good. bucks, Coach Mike will put you up. Good, good matchups there, all those games. Yeah, so Saturday night, 6.30 in Jordan, that's the place to be. Next bracket, if you will, next section. Raymond and Springfield, winner gets Young America. Young America, them and Jordan, either way, either one could have been the number one overall in my book. I could have seen it either way without arguing. And Young America picked up, and I, okay, I'm going to say this because it's local, picked up two Watertown pitchers in the draft. Cheetah and Aiton picked up those two guys up. So, plus that the first overall pick, you got Schwartz from Plato. So, Plato and Watertown, two teams everybody thought would be in it, are out. Three of those pitchers are going to be on Young America's squad, who arguably was one of the, the top seed anyway. Well, and Young America, good point. Young America was the number two ranked team when the last rankings were done in the entire state of Minnesota. They played the last few years in Class B. They dropped down this year now to Class C, and they could be the team to beat on this entire 
state tournament. Uh, I have, it'd be tough to see anyone beating this young America team. Now you add in three new pitchers, three stud pitchers, by the way, Raymond yep. and Springfield, whoever wins, that's a meat grinder to face young America in the second round. And you got Union Hill and St. Peter winner against Clinton. Union Hill, nothing to see that. They're a fairly good team too. I, I like them in that little triad there. Now, one thing to add, Bell Plain is the host site there. Union Hill, for folks not familiar with where that is, it's really the next town over. Uh, yeah. If you go farther, you keep going, it's New Prague. Union Hill is kind of in between, right next to Bell Plain. One could call that a home field advantage, if you will. Oh, and St. Peter ain't that far either. Yes. St. Peter, if I recall, though, is that where the loony bin is, too, in St. Peter? Yes. Just saying. Just saying. It is. They got a good it squad. Just, just saying. St. No. Peter Saints, uh, good good squad. They have a tough time making it, but they, they've got some good teams each year. So those two teams kind of both playing in their backyard. So that could be a fun one just for the fans on a Friday night. That could be a good game when it gets Clinton. Uh, uh, farming and the Maple Lake there on Saturday late morning, early afternoon. Now, one note, one note there, Andy, and then I'll be done talking here for a while. This is, I believe, the second best or that first game. These two teams, that that Webster-Buckman game yep. and this Farming Maple Lake. Farming Flames travels very well. This, yes. this is going to be a loud section. Green Isle only holds how many hundreds of people? Uh, a couple hundred people. Farming Flames will bring – it'll be a loud, obnoxious group there in a good way. And Maple Lake is the defending champions from Class C from last year, the Lakers. And, and the Flames, they travel good, kind of like the Watertown Red Devil fans travel good. So, so that Green Isle game at 11 a.m. on Saturday, that's going to be a boisterous affair, and any team could win that. The problem is they're going to take on Fairmont in the second round. And we've heard a lot of Fairmont two, three, four years back as one of the alt the, uh, favorites uh, again. I haven't yeah. heard much about them this year. Uh, I haven't heard much about Fairmont. By, though, so. they're, they're always good, but that though, that's a good three-group bracket right there. Yep. And then you have Princeton and Niswa went against Sartell. And now, uh, Niswa, when the final rankings were done, tied for fifth in the entire yep. state. So keep in mind, we're, there's four brackets we're going to show you for the first, for the uh, class, class C. We've already mentioned five teams in the top five that are ranked at the final post yep. rankings for the top 10. They're all in this upper bracket. Yep. It's going to be a meat grinder, the top bracket and this will look out for them even though they finished third in their tournament this year next bracket next section next chunk whatever you want to call it here morris and waterville winner getting red wing now the only thing i think with here is is with waterville is i'm not going to call it the the, the sympathy vote but but they had the player die this year remember the the death of the yes. player so they're going to have the they might be riding the wave of the support yep. for Mr. Uh, Selner there, the player that died. Uh, sad, sad news coming out of Waterville. So unless you see that swing, the momentum um, could carry them in a couple wins down the road because right. of that uh, momentum. I'm not sure if they're going to be wearing a, a circle or a black band on their arm or anything. Yeah, like I haven't that. heard. That's the team that has lost that player. Uh, Cortland and Richmond went against Isanti. That's in Green Owl on Saturday, that first game, Saturday evening. St. Joseph and Jackson, Sunday afternoon, Jordan, winner gets Buffalo. And then Carver and the Prez Brewers, winner gets Watkins. P that's um, Piers. And Piers has Piers, two I mean, teams. Um, the, this is the Brewers. Uh, they have two teams in Piers. This is the Brewers that advance to the state. They'll play Carver. Now, Andy, for those who don't know, Carver is really just – essentially a skip and a jump away from Jordan's. That's another right. essentially a home game for Carver with the fans. That could be very interesting. And Carver being a 7C team, I'll tell you this right now, two of their three pitchers they drafted, Drew Hedke and Holt Hunziger, played on Watertown guys. Again, two teams people thought would be in. They got stud pitcher from each team on Carver's staff. So just because Carver – and Carver was the five seed going into the 7C tournament. So that means they weren't the top four – they were pretty damn close. They beat Plato. They won the games they needed to to get in. And they got a couple studs to help them. So they could quietly. Black Sox could make run. some noise. Uh, I've been uh, heavily focused on my on our Twitter account here, Andy, uh, for the Cortland Cubs this year. I still think look for them to make a, a run here 
uh, winning a, a couple games here in a row, two or three maybe, uh, maybe even reaching the the Elite Eight. There's a tough team there, the Cortland Cubs. Yeah. Here we go, last group. Lesur and Madison, winner gets Bird Island. Bird Island was ranked fairly high this year, I believe, too. At least in the, the also mentions if they didn't get top ten. Yeah, fourth, fourth. Fourth error, okay. Uh, Laverne and Kimball, winner gets Foley, or Foley gets the winner of that, I guess, however you want to word it. Bemidji Blue Ox and Litchfield, winner gets New York Mills. Now, New York Mills, for those of you who follow our Facebook page, um, kind of been fans of them this year. I went and saw them play one game this year. So I'm following them, kind of Facebook friends with some of the guys on there. They won their conference. They were the one seed they went through pretty handily. I mean, they weren't winning 10 nothing games, but they did fairly well. Waconia comes out of that next bracket. The New York Mills Waconia game, without putting the cart ahead of the horse, I want to go to that game. I'm just telling you right now, if that if that works out where Waconia beats Hanska and then beats Montgomery, I want it, and New York Mills can get through that game. If it's Mills and Waconia, I want to go. That's well, that would be good because we can that game. I, I do think that in Green Isle, that first Friday night game, that's coming up already under the lights in Green Isle. Hanska has their hands full against a tough Waconia team. Waconia finished the season ranked number 10th in the state for Class C. But they could have been first round by easy. The pick that they picked up by getting John Bezdecek uh, this year, picking him up, they're obviously going to throw him the first game. He's a stud lefty. And now this first round games, folks have got to remember, there's only one game. There's just one game. Everyone plays one game. There's no two games. Yep. You can put all your eggs in one basket for one game. Use your best pitcher. And in round two, there's one game. Everyone just plays one game. That's it. It doesn't get to multiple games till the Labor Day weekend. So if Waconia makes a run here with the big lefty Bezdecek, they may use him the first two games and get to that third round without having to dig too deep. And keep in mind that they have three stud draftees yeah. as well. They got uh, Blake Trich from Mayor, or from Mayor, Austin Dent from Green Isle, and Anson Dulas from Watertown. So Dent, the Green Isle kid, they could picture him that first game in front of the home crowd. Oh you know? yes, they do have a little home loving right there. He's got his. He brings the wife and family and mom and dad to the game. You know, get you know, like he's, so, guy so goes Dent town. just got out of high school or is going into college for uh, SMSU. He's going to be a fresh incoming freshman yep. pitching there for there in Marshall. Minnesota, he's going to be an incoming freshman of pitching for that team. So he's a local Green Isle guy. Uh, Blake Trich has, uh, I remember last year for the Crow River, threw a no hitter. This guy is tough. The Laconia guys are tough. Anson, uh, is it Dulas? Dulas. Dulas, another good pitcher. So yeah. I think Hanska's got, their, Hanska's got their hands full. And the winner plays Montgomery, who hasn't been in for a while, a couple of years. I think the Mallards for Montgomery coming out of another tough section. I think Montgomery's going to have their hands full in that yep. second round game. And if you want to see a team possibly Waconia run two or three games here, uh, ripping off some wins, you might see that happen. But, boy, that's a tough yeah, bracket. Now, tough. now, going back, I forgot the Lee Sewer one up above. Yep. Lee Sewer, basically the next town south of Belle Plaine, if you will, yep. uh, very close. That's going to be a very advanced advantageous game for Lee Sewer and Lee Sewer is a very young team that picked up a bunch of good players before the season started and then that once again with the players from the draft as well that Lee Sewer team could be tough and the winner is going to face Bird Island who's ranked now, Lee Bird Island game could be very good that's yeah so I think Madison is going to be on the outside looking in in this game uh, yep. I, I don't, that's not a rip on I'm just saying not a Madison, rip I'm just saying that's how good this Lee Sewer team is It'll be tough. They'll have their hands full. Yeah. And, and that's it. That's the four. That's all the teams right there. So let's go back, Andy. I missed something on the third yeah. on the third slide. There we go. So the Morris third slide Waterville. here, it's the St. Joseph Jackson bracket. Yep. St. Joseph Jackson, the winner takes on Buffalo. What we failed yep. to mention coming out of Region 12 is Buffalo. That Buffalo team is ranked seventh in the state, Class C. Now, that's another top 10 team awaiting in the second round there that we haven't heard much from the Buffalo, but being in that North star conference with Delano and all these good teams, Dassel, Cocado, be on the look for that Buffalo team as a, as a tough 
tough go round uh, with that squad now, there. But and I'm not just saying this to play favorites here either. We talked about the top ten, and they had another seventeen teams that were also mentions or also receiving votes, whatever you will. These first round buys were all people who won their conference. Those 17 teams, I never saw New York Mills' name on there. Top 10, also receiving votes. No. So, yet, yet they won theirs. Oh, they won a week region. They won a week one. They still won it. They still yeah. got that first round by. So that's where I'm kind of. Yeah, you may well, not be ranked in the top the 10, but they're all teams that are dangerous, especially when you add three pitchers to each roster as well. Now, the roster size, I believe. Andy, is it, is it 25 for the postseason? Now yeah. with the three pitchers, you're up to 28. I believe that's the roster size for all these teams in class. There's 48 teams in Class C. And I think New York Mills had a couple pitchers that made it to the Final Four last year. So now this team is in. They got to keep their own pitchers plus add now. So watch for New York Mills. Watch that name that we kind of mentioned a lot um, on the winning side, if you will. That's yeah. that's the brackets right there, boys. That's everything. Um, I know it seems like every bracket we talk to, like this is the best one there is. It's the best one there is. They did a really good draw, job matching up teams this year. Not that they've done bad in the past, but this year it continued. Some good draws. A show coming up after all the playoffs are done, uh, probably mid-September. Minnesota Baseball Association is re regrouping everyone. So be more teams than A's. Half these teams are going to be. And we'll get to that later. So you might not see these matchups again for a while. And if you do, yeah, that's, that, that is called. Clubs. And the, what they're calling that from the Minnesota State uh, Baseball Association is the rough draft or a preliminary version or a draft version. Now, mm -hmm. if that gets pushed through and voted and the vote gets approved, Andy, you are correct. This Class C state tournament is going to look completely different in future years because a lot of these big teams are set to go to a or set to propose to go up to class b so get out yeah. there if you can this for the next three weekends and watch these games because some of these rivalry matchups uh, could be going away the sites once again are jordan at the minimet green isle at the irish yard and they okay. playing tiger tiger park so three yeah, and they got a new Tiger at, logo up today, too, at that part. Oh, yes. That's now, if you look at the, the sites uh, for the locations that the, these fields and the grounds crew uh, painstakingly have made these uh, ballparks look tremendous. They're all ready to go. And any team going to play on any of these fields, it's going to be awesome to be able to take part in this tournament. Once again, it's single elimination. You lose, you go home, you win, you advance. It's three weekends. Every team uh, and the first round plays once, unless if you have that buy. That second round, it's all the first team buys, first round buys play against the winners from this weekend. Then when you get into Labor Day weekend is when there's games Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the championship on oh. Monday, Labor Day Monday. NBA's website has got a very good map on there on how to, where to park for all these locations and everything else. So if you're not familiar with some of them or it's been a few years since you've been there, Go to the web, NBA, Minnesota Baseball Association website. They got little maps on where to park and how to get there. Very helpful. Once you get to the final, once you get to the Elite Eight, the games are all in Jordan and Green Isle. Um, yep. The first weekend's game, first first three weekends, there's games also, there's games in Belle Plaine. But as you get to that Labor Day weekend, the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and the championship game are going to be Jordan and Green Isle only. So, Try to get out there to the games. The fun thing is, is that the local uh, brewery in Jordan, Brew de Ta, is coming up with the beers this year, the craft beers, and they're going to do one, I believe, one name after each of the host sites, much like they did last year, Andy. You know, Litchfield had a had a beer. Delano had their own version of a beer. Uh, the other site was Litchfield. Uh, Litchfield, yeah. Dassel, and Delano. So this year they'll have a – Green Isle will have their own beer, a 16-ounce beer. Jordan will have a beer with their own name on it, and – Bell Plain as well. So look for those kinds of things. There will be a tournament program, of course, and I think that's it. It's fun time of the year, though. Answer time. The answer to the trivia question, what was the first year, when was the first year that they used dual sites for the Minnesota Baseball Association State Tournament? The answer, Andy, when do you think it was? We've been doing it for 101 I, years. 
I know it was Bell playing Jorgs who made a big deal about the logo, how it was the same logo from then. They just kind of updated it. And to tell you the truth, I'm going to guess it was probably the mid to late 80s. So with Twins baseball being big, I'm going to say 87. The answer is 81, 1981. <clears throat> so that Jordan Bell playing, time they broke it out and did it in Bell playing, this is the reminiscence ties ties back to the trivia question from our show tonight. It's Jordan and Bell playing with the first team or first cities to ever co-host state tournament ever. Previous to that, it was always done by a single city, single host site. So they broke it up. And like we said recently, now it's it's common to have three sites, even four sites. Yeah. Now there's a 2012, I looked in the book, 2012, St. Cloud, after they switched to dual sites, St. Cloud in 2012 was a sole site host in 2012 for the state baseball tournament. But St. Cloud has multiple fields in the city right. limit that they were hosted at multiple fields, but all in the city of St. Cloud. So that's a trick question for St. Cloud. But they it converted it over multiple to, fields, one city. They converted it over in 81 for the first time ever, and that's a resounding success because it really increased the population. I mean, the capacity, the, the crowds that came through and the attendance really jacked up. And that's when it really started taking off was in that year. And Andy, just so you know, I attended that tournament back in 81. The first one I've ever attended in my life was 1981. I could probably say that I was there as an 11 year old youth. Youth. Now, youth. if our friends at the channel five are not lying to us, cause I don't, I don't know why Ren Claire would lie to me. I mean, we're pretty close. Ren. Um, Ren, I like Ren. She's nice. Um, looking like rain Thursday and Friday, so I don't know if the games will be canceled, but could be conditions. Not making excuses. I'm letting you know because of parking, so a lot of dirt lots you're parking on when you get there. So that's why I'm letting you know. Don't wear new white shoes. Oh, yes. Yes, perfect. But uh, over here. Um, they, are, they do very good at rerouting those games and getting those games made up. Uh, inevitably – Andy, uh, you're well aware, for three straight weekends of this baseball tournament, there's going to be rain. Right. One, two of the days, maybe an entire day, and an afternoon, an evening, something. There's going to be rain, and so they will work to make those up. That's why they have the luxury of having three straight weekends to do this and an and entire Shockey holiday weekend. And is a special number four site. So some games, if there is rain Friday, Shockby might get a little more action than they bargained for. Yep. Yep, and once again, this show was just for Class C. There is an entire Class B tournament going on as well, single elimination. That's not part of this broadcast, but try to get out and see some of those games as well. Very good action statewide in this, the 100, 101st year. And we'll still show B results on our Facebook page and Instagram and Twitter, all that stuff too. Just... We'll cover them all. Yep, that's good that's stuff. What we're Look for our ad once again, and if you see us, come up and say hi. You know, uh, uh, we love seeing you get the ballpark. It, it, uh, we're not making predictions because, like I said, the other pitchers, it's too hard. Maybe after two weekends, we might make serious predictions. But like I said, if I had, if you wanted one right now, Jordan, because they're hosting, and that is a tough thing to pull off. Uh, That's basically that, I'm going. That is tough, but yeah, it could Jordan. happen. They're the number one got? team. If you had to say right now, who you got? I would say Young America. Yeah, and, and that was the other side of my coin when I flipped it. It was one of those two. And they're both, Andy, they're both in the same bracket. Yeah, so they won't meet in the finals. No. They'll meet in the semis. They would potentially meet in a semifinal game. And so this, there's some talent, a lot of talent in these in these games. Once again, the reason we bring up the top 10 ranking is to, just to put yourself kind of in a – to familiarize yourself with how these teams have been doing through the regular season. They do though throw those out when the break, when the brackets come out. They throw those out, and in fact, they don't reseed everybody because it's too hard. Each yeah, those team first round buys weren't the top sixteen teams. They were the region winners. Region winners, and there's upsets all around, and we know there's going to be upsets in this tournament too. So, with adding three new fresh arms for each team to be able to use anytime you want for three straight weeks, uh, this is a crapshoot. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, and there's going to be upsets galore. I just can't wait till the upsets start happening. But on paper, it's it's easy to forecast, or to, or to, if you want, fill out your bracket ahead of time and see how good you do. But it's, say, boy, is it tough. They say the extra arms help on Labor Day weekend. They could help this first weekend too if there's rain, and you gotta 
half a game done and sorry, third inning got to cancel Friday. You're playing Saturday. That extra arm is going to help. They help. The, the, the three extra arms are huge. Uh, you know, it's the intent. The, the spirit of it is for those multiple back-to-back-to-back games yeah. on Labor Day weekend. But look for some teams to come out of the gate using them as a starter on day one. Well, I said the kids from Green out. You're pitching at home. Why not? First round, get them in there. You never know how it could go. All right, any questions, comments, please leave your comments below. We'll talk to you later and hopefully see you at the ballpark. See ya. See ya.